<laughs> All right, we're here. This is Teresa with Pin Traffic Power. We're here with Nancy and we are talking about Pinterest. So she's going to share with us some things about what she's been doing with her Pinterest account. Sorry about the issue that we had earlier of having just a little bit of technical problems. So kind of had to redo all of this on the back end, but here we are live. So while you're here, definitely drop some comments down below. If you have questions, put them in the comment section so that we can read them and be able to answer these questions. Um, feel free to share this with people so that they can jump in and be able to answer questions. Uh, ask questions and leave comments as well if they especially need help with their Pinterest marketing for their business. So Nancy has been a part of the Pin Traffic Power um, with the Pinterest for e-commerce course. She's been taking some of these things. She's also been uh, one of my coaching students, believe it or not, for a long time and sells on Amazon, sells in different places, does different a variety of different things and um, then began doing some Pinterest marketing as well. So Nancy, why don't you share first just a little bit more about yourself of whatever the, whatever else that you wanna share and what you're about, what you've been doing and um, anything um, about that first and then we can get into Pinterest. Okay, I'll make it quick. I started like September of 16 and said, oh my gosh, I'm gonna try this thing. You know, I did the, the standard, the RA and then made it through the first Q4 and now I'm doing wholesale. Teresa's helped me along the way. I do not want to continue to do physical products forever. Um, so I have a website, a Shopify website. I have a WordPress blog website and I'm marketing, trying to get into marketing on both Pinterest and Facebook. I had been a Pinterest user for years and years. So when you look at my board, you're going to see, oh, my gosh, what is all this stuff? But some of it's my personal because my personal interests and my business interests overlap significantly. So that's kind of me. And I love that because it's the same is true for me um, because you are working. But yet when you're working on stuff that you love and that you enjoy, you forget that you're working. <laughs> so it's the best of both worlds where. You know, sometimes I don't know when I'm working and when I'm having fun and enjoying what I'm doing and relaxing because I just like it. So, it, you know, working on things that you enjoy, it's hard to know if you're working or am I enjoying or having, is this my fun time or is this my work time? I don't know. They all kind of blend together and overlap. So it's so when people ask that question of, you know, how many hours do you work on your business? And I think, I kind of sometimes have no idea because <laughs> some days I could do this forever and other days it might be just a short amount of time that I, all that I have time for, but it's something that I, that is, that I really enjoy and love and definitely um, lose track of time when doing this kind of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. When you get onto Pinterest, you lose track of time, time really fast because there's all kinds of stuff out there. There's just tons and tons and tons of, stu of stuff. And so you lose track of all of that and you forget about what you're doing and you get all involved in, and everything. Hours go by and you're still having fun on Pinterest. So the same could be true there and you kind of have to be careful that you do, uh, you know, get some work done as well. But um, when I'm working on Pinterest, then I, I feel like I'm not really working anymore. And it's, it's just a whole lot of fun to do. So I don't know how you feel about that, Nancy. Do you feel like um, work and fun kind of blend together or? That was, I don't know if it's a problem, but an observation I made initially when I set up Pinterest, my Pinterest business account, I made it separate from my personal account. My personal account had lots and lots of boards. When my daughter got married, we had a couple of boards and we shared those. And I've done bridal showers and baby showers. And, you know, I put all that stuff there. And then, you know, I'm pinning and ready for another event and going, wait a minute, is this for my business or is this for me personally? Yeah. So, <laughs> and now I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to be doing a um, another quilt, baby quilt and a baby activity book. And it's all just going to go in the same place. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I kind of lose, lose track. I don't know which is which. <laughs> okay, so for a little bit of background here, 
um, first to get established is that Nancy sells in a niche area. She is a, has a special interest area that she really loves and enjoys and is developing that further. And you don't have to have a niche area necessarily to do well in e-commerce and to do well in Pinterest, but it kind of helps, especially if it's something that you love and enjoy because you, you end up working on it more. Um, it's something that you enjoy doing and you have more knowledge about it that you can share more things that you're able to do that the average person may not be able to do. So my niche area is music. What is your niche area that you want to share? Um, Nancy with your niche oh. area. Well, it's, it's kind of a variety of things. It's, it's lots of do it yourself, uh, sewing, quilting. Um, one of the sewing things I did for about 10 years, I took care of show choir costumes. Um, done lots of quilts, but I'm also like a do it yourselfer. Mm -hmm. So those of us who are do-it-yourselfers, we see something and we go, oh, how can I make that? You don't say, where can I go to buy that? It's yes. how can I make it? And it's kind of kind of like that for do-it-yourselfers. So, mm -hmm. um, And those people, they buy lots of stuff. And they may never get around to making the project, but they want to get buy all the materials to have on hand so that when that time comes available, when they can make the project, they've got everything ready to go. Well, you have to. For just <laughs> you may never get it again. You may see some awesome fabric. It's on sale. You can't help it. Just got to buy it. You know, so, yeah, I have a whole room yeah. in my house. It's just sewing stuff. Right. So I'm just sharing about the mindset of the buyer within this particular niche. And if you have have been involved in that, then you know that more about that, that people buy stuff, even though they may not get around to actually making the craft or making the project, they want to buy the materials anyways, ahead of time to be prepared. So if you know that in the niche, then you can leverage that and not be afraid of, okay, well, let's put together some collections of things, uh, projects that people would want to make and do it in a way, put it on the Pinterest, and then you're able to sell more of the stuff that you are um, selling of what, what it is that you're offering. So that's one really, really big way to leverage Pinterest. So in this case, it's a lot of do-it-yourself projects that's very, very popular on Pinterest. Um, there's a ton of stuff that does very well on Pinterest that people may not realize, but this is definitely a niche area that has a lot of momentum and can leverage it for a long ways. So let's take a look at um, your profile on Pinterest. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna go out and kind of explore. I've gotta figure out how to make this where you can people can see this better. If there's a way to make it bigger on the screen. That's not really all that big, is it? Unfortunately. That may be what we have to do though, because that's the best option that I see here. Okay, we're gonna go with that. And let's head on over and take a look at this. Um, hopefully you're able to see this okay. Are you able to see this, Nancy, okay? I can, yeah. Probably should, yeah, so then everyone can see it. So this is this is her place on Pinterest. This is her, her business place, it's called the Old Gettin' Place. And then it has some extra keywords after that of what is this business about, what is, she about that is very very important in your profile okay so definitely have your business name and then you need keywords that you find right here on pinterest after that that is going to help you get found with pinterest so a lot of people will find your profile just because of your keywords that you put in right here so she's optimized this pretty well she's got a lot of um, keywords in there of what people are searching for on pinterest and therefore her profile will come up in search. So I don't know if you know this, but when you search for different things, not only do you get other keywords, but you get boards and you get a suggestion of people uh, to follow other profiles to take a look at in profile. And hers would come up for sewing, quilting, crafting, do it yourself, online store, know how, just a variety of different things there. So that's something that you definitely need to do. And then you can take some of that and put that down into this area, which is the about section of the profile. And what I would do is repeat many of those main keywords of what you're about down here, which is what she did, sewing, quilting, 
and then she expanded it to needlework, embroidery, kind of cross stitch crafts, to do it yourself gifts. You put in as many as you can there. And then this is what's also really cool is that she has a little bit.ly link for sign up on my email list right at the very end. That's definitely what you want to do. People will take the time to copy this and paste it out into a browser and say, wow, I could get like free shipping in her store. Awesome. I'm going to sign up so that I can find out how I can get that, especially if they've been following for a long time and they really, really love the type of things that um, your store offers. And that's exactly what you want. Right here is the showcase. This you need to enable inside of your account in the settings. Everyone needs to have this showcase going. Why? Because it's above the fold and the fold area is the bottom right here, the bottom section of a screen when someone just lands on a website and they don't scroll down. Everything that they can see on the, on the page without scrolling down is called above the fold. That is the most valuable real estate property that you can have on a website, on any web, web page, anywhere. So your showcase is what is above the fold and you can see the top half of the showcase. People make a decision within two seconds. Do I like the stuff that this person offers? Do I wanna follow them? Do I wanna see more of their stuff on Pinterest? They're gonna make that decision quickly Sometimes reading this is not going to be enough for them to make the decision, but having these images show up in the showcase is going to be what seals the deal because images are more powerful than words to people. It helps them to understand faster and process things faster in the brain. That's why Pinterest is so powerful is because it is image based. And people are, um, they love images. They can connect with it easier and better and be able to understand what something is about a lot faster and if they like it or not. So if I scroll down a little bit more, we can see more of that showcase. And I can see very quickly everything that's being offered in the showcase. And I can say, wow, yes, I love counting cross stitch. Oh, this is cool. I love that mug. I love, oh, she offers t shirts about about quilting and sewing, that's awesome. I want some of those. I'm gonna follow this person. I come up here, I click the follow button and I'm done. When someone comes and clicks on that follow button here on your profile, they begin to follow all of your boards automatically down here. That's really important because this is where you spend all of your time creating boards and putting your pins inside of these boards. What happens is they follow all of your boards when they log into their Pinterest account, they're going to start seeing all of the pins that Nancy has been pinning inside of their account. And that stuff is gonna to begin to follow them. Pinterest will make suggestions and say, well, if you like these pins, you'll probably like some of these pins that are similar. What that does is it gives you a very, very highly targeted person that may become your customer and may become a very loyal customer. So instead of trying to grab everybody out in the world and say they're going to be my customer, that's a lot more effort than it is to have high targeted person where I'm only going to go after the people who are truly interested in sewing and quilting and do-it-yourself products. Pinterest has a smart feed that makes it easier for you to do that, a lot easier for you to target that audience down so that you have people who really do want what you have to offer and you focus on them. That's the type of audience that you wanna build and you can do that here on Pinterest a lot easier than you can other places. Okay, so um, there's lots of boards down here and what you can do with a showcase is feature your top five boards. What I would do is go into your analytics, go into your profile, and then look at your top boards to see in your analytics what boards are getting the most saves, repins, the most clicks. And those are the boards that you wanna pick to include in your showcase. You can also take uh, a seasonal board and put that seasonal board up here in the showcase. So for example, Valentine's Day is coming up 
And if you had a Valentine's Day board, I would pop that Valentine's Day board into this showcase area through the season, and then I would remove it and put in a different seasonal board so that you have um, a few of your foundational boards that are your most popular. And then you have at least one seasonal board that you showcase because that's the trend that people are looking for. And it's gonna have a lot of eye appeal and draw people in because of the season. All right, now, this is what's also great. The very first board is the store. Everyone who has a store, everyone who has products, you need one store board or one product board. Okay, so if you don't have a store, let's say that you sell in a marketplace somewhere, you sell on Amazon, you sell on Etsy, eBay, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to have a product board. It's a board that is the very first one people can see that is your business name. And it's everything that you have to offer is pinned inside of this board. Here's why. When I come to her profile and I want to now, I look at this, I make a decision. Ooh, I like this stuff. This is definitely for me. I'm more likely now to scroll down to find out more. And I take a look at her boards. And when her board, the first one that I see is everything that she has to offer. I want to click on that board and see what it is that she has for sale. Because when people, when you tell people, hey, I have a business. And they ask, well, what kind of business? Well, I sell products. They say, well, what kind of products? What do you offer? Here's a quick way to answer that question. Everything that you have to offer is in one spot, making it very easy and convenient for people to go and see. Okay, so this is no different on Pinterest than it would be in real life. In real life, you would have a store and you would say, oh, just pop into my store. You can see everything that I have there. You don't want to have to go through and, and talk about the list of every single item that you sell. It's just easier to point them to one location. So you're gonna do the same thing on Pinterest. You're gonna point them to one location of everything that you have to offer. And that one location is your very first board that is right here. So this is what's awesome. Her first, first board is all of her products and everything that she is offering. Okay, from there, if you have a blog, your next board could be your blog board. And she doesn't have a blog board quite yet, but that's <laughs> probably down the road. I actually have a blog board and it's the very first one and I don't have a product oh, board. Oh, so. you don't have a product board. So this is actually your blog board. Okay. Right. Well, that's good. You want your product board to be first, your blog board to be second. So you'll be able to do that um, uh, down the road as well. Um, is I, kind be of, able to I, I have a product board that has see, the quilters mug, the quilters know where to stick it mug, has some... Okay exclusive products on it. So this is a good, this is helpful for me to know what changes I need to make yeah. in, my, in my Pinterest area. Yeah, you could take your product board and pop it up here. And you could say old get in place products or the old get in place store. Now that doesn't have to be necessarily everything literally in your Shopify store. It could be other coming from other marketplaces too. If you don't feel comfortable with that, just say old get in place products. And then the other board would be called the old get in place blog. So that it's real clear that here's my products board. Here's my blog board. Because there are people who are going to want to read those articles. Now what you put in your articles is also your products. But sometimes, you know, it's just, it's just convenient for people so they could see, okay, here's my products. This is all in one board. Here's the articles that I love to read because in these articles, she talks about this really cool do-it-yourself project that I really want to make. And so I want to go into the blog and save that for later. And then inside of her blog, she has these suggestions of everything to buy to make that project. So when I'm ready, I'll go in and I'll start like buying all of that stuff real fast. And I've got the tutorial, how to make the project. It's a one-stop shop. That's what people want because it's convenient. It saves time and it helps them to uh, make their projects faster and do whatever it is that they want to take action on. So that's what's useful about a blog. And I think that for people in e-commerce, the blog is kind of an elusive thing. 
And um, I'm hoping to encourage more people to start using a blog for your marketing if you wanna do branding and do, do this a little bit more long-term. You might find, like what I do, that I actually sell more products from my store that are coming from my blog that are brought to my blog from Pinterest. So it's kind of like a, a roundabout way but that's indirect sales where they come to the blog because they were interested in an article that they read and then they see all these cool products and then they go into your store and they shop because they just love what you have to offer. They get to know you through your blog. They see who you are. You're building a relationship with your reader. They begin to trust you and if they love what you are talking about as a person, as a human inside of your blog, they're going to love everything else that you have to offer in your store. That's just how human beings are. So the blog really, really helps. If I were to take and just go Pinterest straight to the product, they may not know how to use that product or what is this product or what is it for. A great place to explain all of that information is inside of a blog. So it's kind of like that nice bridge between the shopper and the product. And the blog, in my opinion, is the nice bridge to help that shopper get to that point of here's an awesome, cool product. And this is something that might help you. Here's how. So we've got um, the blog board, but definitely you could have your product board and then next would be your blog board. Okay, now you have your Valentine's Day um, board. That's coming up real soon. What I would do is also showcase that up here so that you've got one little seasonal thing at all times that's being showcased. And um, something that people may not realize is that there is a main picture for these boards that you can set in your settings. You click an edit button, which is that little pencil in the corner. And you can change what your image is that's featured on the front of your board. And it could be any image that you want. You can create a special image if you want. That's, that's just for vanity reasons. Is it really going to help you get more followers? No, it's not. It's just to make it look pretty is all that it is. And anymore, people really don't care about that. Um, it could also be for branding, too, if you want to. So if you want to spend that extra time, you could create an image that would look similar for every one of your boards. And on that image would be the name of your board. That's just for vanity reasons. But I really honestly don't think that it's for any that it really helps anymore. It doesn't really um, it's not going to give you more followers on a board. It just makes it look nice on the outside, but honestly, I don't think people care that much. So you could just pick one of your pins and just feature that as your featured image, like what Nancy has done here. That's your featured image for the front of your board. So that's why there's one big picture, and then there's a couple smaller pictures over here on the side. And it just looks a little bit nicer because it's easier to see what it's about. And I can say, oh, I love this mug. So I'm going to go in, I mean, I'm going to follow that board real quick and I want to go in and shop around and see what else she's got because I love this mug. So she's probably got a bunch of other stuff too that I would absolutely fall in love with. Okay. And then there's some other things here. This is a gift guide. So inside of the Pinterest for e-commerce course, we had been um, discussing gift guides and how great they can be. And developing these gift guides there's different ways you could do it. You could do it inside of a blog. There's other methods too. If you don't have a website, that's okay. There's multiple ways that you could do it. But these gift guides are very, very popular on Pinterest. People look for this stuff when they are planning to do different things and they collect those and put them into their boards to save for later. So for people who are in the niche of sewing, crafting, do-it-yourself, they are going to save these gift guides and guides on how to do a project. And here's all the materials you need to make that project. They're going to save that stuff into a special board inside of their own Pinterest account so that they can take action on it later. And uh, they really will. Now, what's different about Pinterest is the mindset of people that come here. 
they don't come here to socialize. You can see that there's not much social ac um, activity with friends. It's mostly visual and being able to see some really cool stuff. People love that about Pinterest because it gives them a break from the rest of the world. So on Facebook, they're there to interact with friends. And then they get tired of maybe the political posts and the negativity that people might have. And they're reading all this stuff. It says, okay, that's enough. I'm going over to Pinterest. Why? Because you're not going to see that on Pinterest. You're not going to see people writing opinions, um, writing things that might be negative, things that could be depressing. You don't see that over here. You just see awesome looking pins that are actually inspiring and uplifting. So when people walk away from Pinterest, they feel better. They feel positive. They feel good. That's why they like to spend time here and hang out. They're also here to take action to do something. And one of those actions is, is to buy something. So out of all of the social media sites, this one is the highest for shoppers. It's like going into a mall and they're going and window shopping. Every one of these boards is like a store in a way. And they're able to take a peek in and decide what they like and don't like. And they might, if they want to come back to that little boutique later, they're going to click follow on that board. That way they can return to it every single time. So that's what's neat about Pinterest that you're not going to find on other social media sites. Okay. So the rest of these boards are awesome. There are foundational boards, which is basically what your business is about. So those foundational boards here is sewing supply, sewing and quilting, um, more quilting stuff, needlework, you know, very specific things within this niche area. And then we have a seasonal board, which is a Valentine board. And you want to incorporate in your seasonal boards too. You can put your same pins in there and um, include it with more Valentine's Day stuff. And you can get your products looking, giving them a Valentine look so that you can hit, hit that season. It's the same way as what brick and mortar stores do. They buy physical products. What do they do to help encourage the trend of the season is they decorate the store. And they're going to dress it up by putting out, you know, Valentine decorations around the store. What you do is you do that on your pins. That's the, that's the difference. You can take that and adapt it in a way to uh, Pinterest with your products there so that you're giving the flavor and the atmosphere and the fun that people are looking for of Valentine themed. Um, all right. So we've got that. We've got other things in here too. And again, some of this uh, was from your personal account because you converted it over to a, a business account as well. And there's more different types of products. So like if you sell a lot of coffee mugs, here is a board that's all about coffee mugs. Imagine, look at that cover photo on that, <laughs> on that board. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it was a good looking uh, pin. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. I saw that too, but I wasn't going to point it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's okay that, that we pointed out. That's a pin that I created. So inside the course, we were talking about gift guides and, and how to create these pins and how to put collections together. And this was an example that I did. This is a pin that I created of co coffee mugs that I sell in my Shopify store. And it didn't take but a week and the coffee mugs started selling. And that's a true story. And it's <laughs> and from the tribe. I believe it was, I believe I pinned it from the tribe. <laughs> because we have our own exclusive Tailwind tribe. So we can share our pins with each other, which is awesome. So I can pin other people's awesome stuff that complements what I have to offer and they'll do the same for me. And you have this great community of people that are working together. Um, I love Tailwind Tribes. It's, it's, it's fun and hopefully more people in the course will start to understand that a little bit better. All of this is, is pretty new to people. So it takes a while, I think, to digest some of the information before taking action on it. But it's an, it's an amazing resource. I use Tailwind Tribes every single day to pin out stuff because I can get a lot of really great content of other people to pin out very fast. It's like all in one spot. I don't have to go and hunt for it and search it. 
I can have it right there ready to go. And I pin out their stuff and then I pin out my own stuff. So it's just so convenient and you can pick and choose what you want to pin. You don't run into the issues of, of uh, the group boards that, that can happen where there's people in the group board that are not, they're making really bad pins. Their pins are not going to get that many um, uh, engagement because they don't look very good because they don't know what they're doing and how to do it well on Pinterest. Well, this is a way to control that better um, than what you can in a group board. So that was kind of a solution that Tailwind began to offer because of the issues of group boards. And it's just amazing. I mean, that was that was genius of doing that. So I encourage you to use tribes in Tailwind. Okay. And then, of course, there's more stuff that are foundational boards here. We've got an Easter board here. <laughs> <laughs> the cover image is really cute. I love this because of the humor. And humor is huge on Pinterest. Again, it's that reprieve. It's that break from the world and the negativity in the world. They come on Pinterest and they can get inspired and they can get a good laugh with the humor. So the things that do exceptionally well on Pinterest is quotes and humor, anything really, really funny. And you can learn how to incorporate that stuff around your product pins and do it really, really well. You don't even have to create the, the humor pins and uh, quote pins yourself. You just pin other people's that they've created. Just use their content that they've created that's awesome. And you will allow that to complement your product pins and what's do, what's happening is those quotes and the humor will go viral. And stuff goes viral on Pinterest very easy and very quickly, faster than it does on Facebook by far or any other social media. It goes viral very fast and it draws people into the board. So when people are inside your board, they follow it and they see everything that you have to offer in your board, including your products. So that's why you want to um, include pins in your boards of things that are very popular on Pinterest that are already doing well um, and going viral. And there's, there's tons of boards here. If you feel like this is too many boards, what you could do is take some of this and consolidate. So you could say, okay, I've got like, I've got tons of these gardening boards maybe instead of having so many of them separate, because that could be a lot of work trying to pin to them consistently um, every single month and every day, is say, okay, I want to consolidate these two together. And I'll name it one main board title that's a little bit more general for gardening. And then I'll use the sections within that board. And one section could be the plants. The next section could be the, the decks. Um, next section could be outdoor decor. The next section could be lawn care, the next section could be, and it could be endless sections. And you give those sections really, really great titles with keywords from Pinterest. I think, and we don't know this because naming these sections is so brand new. It just happened in December. My theory is, is that you can get one board then to rank for probably five times more keywords than what you could before because the keyword that you name your section is also going to start to rank high. That's what's amazing about this, this whole section feature. It also makes it cool because it organizes it well. So when the person is inside of your board, they can find what they're looking for a lot faster. That makes it easier for them to take action. Um, have you used the sections yet in any of your boards? I just used one for my exclusive products. I did use sections there and I did want uh -huh. to comment that for the people that don't know it, there are capabilities to move large quantities of pins at one time. Mm -hmm. When you go into a board, you click a button that says organize. That's right. And then you can do it. So you don't have to one by one move from one board to another. Exactly. Exactly. Then you click on all the pins that you want to move. And you say where you want to move it to. So if you want to move it to a section or whatever, yeah, you can do it quick. You can do it really fast of organizing your board. <clears throat> you don't have to do one at a time. So that's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, 
So do you, can we, which board, can we show that board? The one with the sections in it, the one where, it's, yeah. where it has the mug, where it says quilters know where to stick it. Uh-huh. Is it okay to do that? I don't want to do anything no, that's that's, okay. that it's not okay. Because I want to, I want to make sure that you're okay with it in case, you in know. In case I didn't do it right, you can tell me what I, what I need. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's all, it's all private personal information of your, of your business. But yes, so this is what it looks like when you start organizing your board into sections. So this is really cool. Do you see what, I mean, hopefully everyone is able to see what I'm talking about because here's what it would look like without a board being organized into sections. So you can see the difference, just as an example. This is what an average board looks like. It's just a bunch of pins and it could be hundreds and hundreds and thousands of pins in here. So it might take me uh, a couple of hours for me to scroll down through her entire board to find what I'm looking for, to find that one pin that I'm after. Okay, if it takes me longer than two minutes, I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna give up, I'm tired, it's a waste of time. So, this was a feature that people asked Pinterest to do and they finally did it. That's why it's an amazing, amazing thing that everyone needs to, to start doing. So when we go in here and I say, whoa, yes, I want these exclusive products that she has. This is cool. And so this is your product board. Instead of me going through a sea of pins to find that one sweatshirt that I want, I can just go to the section of sweatshirts and say, okay, cool. Let me see if I can find that sweatshirt again that I loved. And then, ooh, I found another one too. So they might walk away with a couple of them. If they want a t-shirt, they just go to the section on t-shirts. Here it is, their totes. Here it is, their coffee mugs. And then other things as well. And you can have a lot of sections in here. I don't know if there's a limit. Um, Pinterest never has said if there is a limit as to how many sections you can create within a board. So uh, right, I'm sure there might be a limit. I don't know what it is, but I haven't discovered what the limit is yet. So you can build out tons and tons and tons of sections within one board. That makes it so much easier for your customers to come into your board. And remember that your customers, your board is like your store. It's like a little mini store, a boutique. And when you go inside of a store, you're gonna shop at the section. Let's say I wanna go to a store and buy clothing. Well, I'm gonna go to the section of the store that is clothing. I'm not going to go to the section of the store to where they're selling groceries to find a sweatshirt that I want to buy. I'm going to go to the clothing department. So that's what you're creating within the sections of your boards is you're creating departments within your store. So I now think of a board as like a little mini store and you're creating departments here and each section is a different department where you can find specifically what you're looking for. So that's what's cool. Now, what's also neat is that this title, if you keyword it right, can help rank your entire board up. So she has a potential to rank number one for ladies pullover hooded sweatshirt, hooded sweatshirt for this board. She has great potential to be able to do that because she's got this keyword here. Now, one thing I would all already do, which you have, is I would take this title that you gave this, if this is a great um, keyworded title for this section, I would also include it here. And this is your board description. That's going to help the whole board rank up and you will be ranked. Hopefully your goal would be to, to be ranked number one for your board um, for this exact um, keyword for that keyword phrase. Now, should I also add for, along with the ladies pullover hooded sweatshirt, I should also add, like there's some about quilting and there's one about knitting and there's one about mm -hmm. crochet. Should I put those keywords in that title as well? Yeah, so um, I would do a search on Pinterest to find out, are people looking for quilting sweatshirts or do they typically use the word hoodie instead? And what I've noticed is that people actually use the, the word hoodie more so than they than they use the pullover or hooded sweatshirt. So I should change my words then to better match what people are looking yes. for. 
Yes. So I would probably, so for example, let's come over here to a, a, what I do is I open up a fresh Pinterest page to do my keyword research. I love doing keyword research on Pinterest. This is like the number one thing you have to do to be successful here. And I would say, okay, let's find out. Are people searching for hoodies? And yes, they are. And you see them pop up here and you hit return. And here is some other ones. So they have hoodie for teens, hoodie women's, hoodie outfit, hoodie funny, cute, all of this, okay? Um, if I type in hooded sweatshirt, people are looking for that as well. But look at hoodie shows up right here. So it's like, well, that's interesting. They're associating a hoodie, a hooded sweatshirt with a hoodie. Um, let's see what else pops up when we add that to it. Okay, so then there's nothing left. Long sleeve. If we do hoodie sweatshirt, you could kind of get the best of both worlds. That might be a better option where you could say hoodie sweatshirt as well instead of a hooded sweatshirt. And there's nothing on this page that gives you any indication of numbers of pins or numbers of boards or it doesn't quantify this in any no. way. What I see is anything over to the left is your highest Anything over on this side is your best keywords. This is what people are looking for most often on Pinterest. So hoodie is huge. It's very huge. I can also tell right here by seeing it pop up like this before even hitting return. And then this is what else they're looking for along with a hoodie. And I don't see the word hooded, hooded sweatshirt included here. So what about just sweatshirt? Now, sweatshirt is here some, yes. Um, okay, now we don't see the word, oh, hoodie is right here as well. So we keep seeing hoodie pop up so many different times, and sweatshirt is not included when we do hoodie. So hoodie is very, very popular. Most people probably go by hoodie than what they do sweatshirt or hooded sweatshirt because a sweatshirt could indicate something without a hood. Um, what you could do to get the, the both uh, best worlds here is say, and I don't think I would necessarily use the word um, pullover. You could decide if you want to, but when we do hooded sweatshirt. Let's see if the word pullover is even there. Oops, let's separate the two words out. Okay, just hoodie is there, but I'm not seeing pullover. So people are not really using the word pullover when they're would searching this, for a hoodie or a hooded sweatshirt. Would this be an indication that I should go back to my listings in Shopify, my other places, and swap those out? Yes. Swap those words out also? Mm -hmm. So that wherever it is, I'm using the, the best keywords. Yep. That's also another little secret, is that your products, wherever they're at, Pinterest is telling you how people are shopping what people are looking for, what, what words that they are using to search for these products. So when they come and they look for a hoodie or a hooded sweatshirt on Pinterest, they, they are there to buy it. They, they're looking for stuff that they want to buy either now or later. And they're going to take action on it. Okay. That's, that's what they're here for. What I would do then is change that in your titles and your Shopify store. And I would get rid of the word pullover because people don't use that, that term. That way you're gonna rank higher in even Google and the Google search results. So if we open up Google, what I found is that Google gives us very similar results to Pinterest in many ways. 
So if I were to type in hoodie, you can see that it's pretty strong here. There's a lot of, of hoodies. If I do um, hooded sweatshirt, there's a lot of people that are searching for a hooded sweatshirt. But if I say a pullover, it's probably an old there's, lady word. <laughs> there's some, you know, pullover hoodies, pullover sweater, but a pullover could be used with different things. Pullover sweatshirts is there. Um, if I do pullover hooded sweatshirt, there are some people searching for that as well. Okay. Now I do have another, a Chrome extension here that I use. It's telling me there's 390 a month in volume. The CPC clicks is a dollar 50 cents. Um, that's the CPC average on Google. So it's fairly high competition for this. I honestly think that I would just take out the word pullover because what you're going to do is really send this direct to Pinterest and, and Pinterest is very strong in Google. Um, Google will pick that up in, uh, from Pinterest as well. And I would rename this title of this section to say hoodie. And then you could say hooded sweatshirt. Ladies, hoodie, hooded sweatshirt. If you feel like that sounds weird and just get rid of the word pullover is you could do ladies hoodie dash or some kind of little marking in there and then hooded sweatshirt after that so that you get the people who are shopping for hooded sweatshirts and you get the people that are shopping for hoodies. You get them both. And that's how I would keyword that, that section title up right here. That's going to bring you in a nice volume of people on Pinterest. And then that will get indexed into Google as well. Um, for your Shopify store, you could take out the word pullover if you want to because it's not as strong of a keyword and it's going to force your other keywords over to the left more. Those are the ones that are actually the most important and they'll get indexed better in Google as well. Um, because people are searching more in that way for a hooded sweatshirt or a hoodie, but they're not necessarily using the word pullover. Um, less people are probably adding that keyword in. Um, if you wanted to talk, I don't know if you want to talk about Bible pins or not, but those are all product mm -hmm. pins, and I think they're viable. I didn't know if you wanted oh, okay. to sure. introduce that or not. Yes. Yeah, so if we click on this, um, it, yeah. So a Bible pin is where it's coming in from an integration with, with something like Shopify. And Shopify was one of the first to pioneer this concept with Pinterest. They partnered together and they have created Bible pins. When you enable that integration in your Shopify store, what that means is that your pins that you pin from your store can basically be purchased right on Pinterest and no one really has to leave Pinterest and they can actually add more stuff to their shopping cart and see everything else that you have to offer. In other words, your entire Shopify store can be on Pinterest and people can buy without even leaving. Now this is a Bible pin. So you can see that Pinterest does something extra special here. They put a black title up at the top for you. You don't have to do that yourself. They include the price for you and they say if it's in stock or if it's out of stock or how many is in stock. The next thing that they do is have this add to bag. So watch what happens. I add it to my shopping cart and I can pick my color. I can say what size I want. I can say I want a black and I want a small and I click done. My price is here. This is the current price. All of this is synced directly from Shopify. So if you ever go out of stock on an item, it will say so. If the price changes because it's on sale, it syncs right here and it will say that it's on sale. That's what's really cool about this integration. I click on done and it's been added to my bag. That's cool. So I've got my shopping bag right here on Pinterest and I can keep going shopping for more. And what the I other also, cool, oh, go ahead. I was going to say the other thing is I can go right here and I can see more stuff that's on Pinterest. Um, 
and see all the other ones that you have to offer. So that's what a Bible pin looks like. And so I can um, look at similar ones. These are from other people though. Pinterest always does that, but it helps, it encourages people to take action to buy um, right on Pinterest. The thing that I was going to add is that it's super, super simple to create those pens. You just mm -hmm. go to your Shopify store and click on mm -hmm. the second Pinterest. Mm -hmm. and then it's, everything is done. Yeah. Put it in the board that you want. And if you've used the right keywords yeah. in your descriptions on your product, you don't even have to change anything. Right. Yeah. You can do that. However, I would, I would actually take the time to create a pin, a long pin. Okay. Because these are very small square pins and they're not going to, they're going to get lost in the feed. People aren't going to notice them as well. Um, so if you create a long pin with at least the minimum, minimum to sized dimensions that um, Pinterest asks of us, which is 735 by 1102 with at least the minimum size dimensions, you can take this picture from your Shopify store, do a right click, download it. It downloads as a PNG, pop it right into your pin, have a cool background for your pin, put some text overlay over the top. You're probably going to get a higher click through rate. When you add that image and then you have the link coming from your Shopify store, it will still be a Bible pin. Okay, good to know. It will still be Bible pin. The first image that you see will be your actual long pin. And then the other images after that are these images which pull in automatically from Shopify that shows the other colors that are offered um, and what they look like. So I would take that extra step and, and time in doing that because you'll get a higher click-through rate. Um, you'll probably get a few more shoppers. Now on that long pin, which is your front pin, what you could do is put all of the, you could pick like certain colors of that same sweatshirt and you could have like a one image that's bigger so that people can see what the graphic design looks like. And then the other images on your pin could be a little bit smaller. It's the same exact hoodie with the same design on the hoodie, except it's just different colors down below. So that at a quick glance, when someone sees that pin, they say, well, I don't like the color black, so I don't want that pin. Now on your pin, it could be where you got the color black, but you've also got other colors too. So if people don't like black, they might like the gray. They look at the pin and they say, oh, well, I love what it says. I don't like the black, but oh, cool. She offers gray. So they're able to take action very fast within two seconds. They probably won't take the time to click on the pin to see the other colors here that you have to offer. What you could even do is take a screenshot of this. <laughs> and I do a lot of screenshot stuff for creating pins. You could take a screenshot of all of this and put that on a pin so that your front pin is all of the colors in one spot. So you could have your main image like this and then have off to the side, scrolling down the other colors. So people could see this and see exactly what that design is. They love it. But then here's all the colors we offer it in and they love the blue. So they're more likely than to click through your pin. So what I mean by click through is here's what the pin looks like. Do I feel enough desire to click on that to look at it closer? You know, that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to get people to want to click on the pin. And I might just, you know, scroll past it and ignore it because it's that typical box shape. It's not a very big pin. It gets lost amongst all the other pins and I can't see it. So I may not take that extra step and do this and click once to see that, oh, they offer other colors. I might have this percep perception in my mind of, oh, I love all of these, but they only come in black and I hate the color black. Okay. They may not take the time to click through to see that there's, it's not just in black and to help your shoppers know that there's other colors to pick from. So that's what I would do is take a, an extra step and create a pin that has your, um, your hoodie and one big picture of the main hoodie that you want to display and then smaller pictures of the hoodies and other colors so that your customers know that you've got them in multiple colors 
And they're more likely to click through that pin because they know immediately, oh, it comes in blue, that's my favorite color. If they just see black and they don't like this color, they're not gonna click through on that pin because they're so literal. I mean, people are so literal. <laughs> they don't think about the fact that it might come in another color. Um, so you kind of have to tell them, you have to, to really tell people. Now notice that there's a little shopping bag up here and there's that red number one. That's because I put that in my bag. So I can click on this. It will show me what's inside of my bag and I can go to checkout. I can pay for it right here on Pinterest. I can even increase my quantity or decrease my quantity. So if I want one, I could buy 12 of these. Thank however, you. However, <laughs> I can buy uh, however many I want. So I may change my mind and say, you know what? My friend would love one of these too. So I'll think I'll get two of them. And we're both the same size and we both would love the same color. So I'm going to make um, a quick decision and I'm going to change that really fast. They can do that. Okay. And they can click the checkout. Let's see what happens when we go to checkout. Here it is. You can add in your payment, your address, everything in here. Uh, if there's any taxes, it will tell you, um, and you can go from there. So that's what it looks like. If you don't want it anymore, then the customer can do this. They can remove it. They can remove it from their bag. If they let it sit in their bag and they don't take action on it because maybe they're still shopping and they just automatically include stuff in their bag and they just do a bunch at once, and they'll go in and they'll buy it later you know, when they get their next paycheck. What happens is I think Pinterest sends them an email that says you have stuff in your shopping bag. And if you change your price in your Shopify store, let's say it goes on sale. I know this for a fact. Pinterest sends you an email that says there's been a price change on one item in your shopping bag on Pinterest. It gives them alert. So then they're going to go back into Pinterest and take a look at their shopping cart that they forgot about and say, oh, it's on sale. Once they get that alert that it's on sale, it's a different price or it doesn't even it, Pinterest doesn't tell you this on sale. It just says that there's been a price change. So you could actually increase the price if you wanted to instead of lowering the price. It doesn't matter. Just any kind of change of price. If there's been any change of price, Pinterest gives people an alert because it's inside their shopping bag. And that's going to encourage people to go back to Pinterest, go to their shopping bag. They're going to take a look here and say, oh, there has been a price change. I better buy it now. And they may assume in their mind that it's a cheaper price and it may or may not be. So that's what's really cool about it. That's the psychology of it. That's that's pretty neat. So that's how you can get into your shopping bag and see everything that you have to offer and take action on that. So I'm going to remove that out of my bag for now. And we can come back to where we were, but that's an, what those viable pins look like and some ideas of what you can do to name the board section. So we're back inside the board and these sections are kind of like a board within a board. You can see that when I was in here, it almost like a, looks like a whole nother board. <laughs> but what's nice is that it's just all one type of thing just all hoodies because that's all I'm interested in. If I click here, I go back to the full board again. And now this time I want totes. I can go back to the main board. This time I want t-shirts. And I wanna shop for some t-shirts. Um, these are all Bible pins. I could add them to my bag. And let's say I want like a hoodie and I want a t-shirt and I want a tote. I can find that stuff a lot faster and easier now within her board because her board is like her store. In fact, it is her store. So that's the power of these sections for your board. And you definitely need to be using these. For the t-shirt, let's look up a better keyword there. Definitely t-shirt. And those are all unisex t-shirts. So, um, Ooh, t-shirt with sayings. Ah, like that. Mm-hmm. That would be even better. If they're funny ones, if they happen to all be funny, you could call them funny t-shirts. 
but t-shirts with sayings is more popular than what funny is. <gasps> Ooh, look at this quilt. Oh, it's a t-shirt quilt. Okay. That's right. a different, that's a different thing. So you, probably, you probably wouldn't want to do that because they're, they're going to feel like uh, they're, that's not what they're looking for. Um, so, so for those of you that don't know, a t-shirt quilt is a type of quilt that's made out of t-shirts. Um, it wouldn't be t-shirts that say quilting funny sayings on them. They're looking for something entirely different there. So it's not, that wouldn't be a way to target that, that customer. Cool t-shirts um, would be one for someone. Um, cute t-shirts would be another one. And you could keep going over here to see what else there is, quote style. So I like the one that says, with sayings. Now, if they are truly, um, let's see, let's go back forward again. I wanna go over here. If these are all just the unisex size, which in my store, this unisex size is still the most popular one that sells. Um, I have some for men and for women, but for whatever reason, the unisex size seems to sell the best. And I think it's because of the cut is a bigger, boxier cut that people feel comfortable in. It's not like a, a tighter fit or a form, a form fit. And it can be great for both men and women. So if you, um, by saying that it's unisex, people know that the cut of it is gonna be a little bigger in general and not tight fitting. So I would say that it's unisex t-shirts and then I would use the keyword over here that we found with sings so that you can use that keyword. Um, they'll know that your niche is still quilting and sewing because you will, you can include that here in your description of your board. And you can, you know, you can say that it's, um, I would, you know, you've got it funny about life, sewing, quilting, crafting, you're targeting those people. So you're targeting the people who are in this niche and then you're targeting those who are looking for t-shirts with sayings. You could even say t-shirts with funny sayings and incorporate the word funny in there as well. So it's, it just depends because maybe not all of your t-shirts have funny sayings. Some of them might be a little bit more serious. So you might not want to use the word funny. Instead, you use the word funny up here in the board title, which you did. And say, you know, funny t-shirts, t-shirts with sayings. And that's how you can capture more people. Um, so that is what it looks like when you're inside of here with sections. Okay, coffee mugs. Let's find out more information about coffee mugs. What can we do here? Ooh, unique. Funny is a big one. Funny coffee mugs. If all of your, if most of your coffee mugs are pretty funny you would want to say not just coffee mugs, but funny coffee mugs or um, humor coffee mugs or coffee mugs humor or coffee mugs unique or unique coffee mugs. If they're cute, like if someone is in a niche area that's very feminine, they could say that they're cute coffee mugs. Um, if you are selling some Disney products, you could have a section of your board be all Disney coffee mugs because there's people that collect those. If you are in the travel niche, it would be a, a section of your board of travel coffee mugs because people collect those. They love them. If you sell on eBay some vintage coffee mugs, you would want to have a section of your board that's vintage coffee mugs. And it just keeps going. All kinds of them. Coffee mugs, sayings is another good one. So you'd have to think about what would work best for you and it's gonna be different for each person with their business and their niche area. Um, they may not all be funny in here, they could be inspirational. So some are funny, some are not. Oh, these are funny, I love it. <laughs> I love this. Her coffee mug says I hook on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious and it's about crochet um that's funny learn things see this one is not necessarily funny but it's inspirational 
And you could say that it's a coffee mug with sayings. Um, so I would use the keywords humor, funny, unique. I would use all of that in your board description about the stuff that's in your board. But what I would pick for the title of this section, I would add at least one more keyword besides coffee mugs. And I would probably pick unique because it's still very popular here on the left, but yet it's general enough to where it's gonna fit everything in here pretty well. I'm saying, yeah, these are pretty unique. You know, some of them are funny, some of them are more inspirational, some of them are great sayings. Um, and, you know, that's how I would probably do that. I would say unique coffee mugs. And you're gonna get a ton of people who are looking for unique coffee mugs because they love them, they collect them, they use them. That's an evergreen product, by the way, is coffee mugs. So anybody in e-commerce out there, uh, my highest sales are in clothing and coffee mugs. They have been for years, whether that's been on Amazon, whether it's been on eBay, whether it's been on my Shopify store. I've done very well with that for years. That goes way back to my days on eBay when I was buying a coffee mug for 50 cents at the thrift store, cleaning it up, putting it on eBay, selling it and making six to $10 profit on that. And then I ended up going to Amazon and buying coffee mugs wholesale. Did very well there. And now I do coffee mugs print on demand, which is basically on demand private label of your own private label products. And that's what Nancy has here is private label stuff going on here that is on demand. And okay. You would, keep, would you just keep one section of coffee mugs or would you split it into two so you could use the words funny versus inspirational? You absolutely could. I would. If you have enough coffee mugs to justify it, I would split more sections and I would say, okay, here's my funny coffee mugs. Here's my um, coffee mugs with sayings. Here's my and have different groups so that if people are looking for the funny ones, they can go there really fast. Um, I'm surprised that we don't see inspirational on here. It might be further out, but these keywords change regularly for what people are looking for. So I'm surprised I don't see the word inspirational or motivational. So instead I would say coffee mugs and then where did we find it with sayings or sayings, coffee mug sayings? Oh, over here, way over to the right. So it's still popular to, to say that. And you could say coffee mug sayings, and that would be one, um, another section as well that you could include in coffee mugs you need. But yeah, you could split that into several different sections and you'd be able to get more of those keywords if you've got enough um, to justify it. So yeah, coffee mugs are big sellers and so are t-shirts. So you could even split these t-shirts out too into several different sections and say, these are my funny t-shirts. These are my t-shirts with sayings. These are my, um, you know, inspirational t-shirts. And that's giving you more keywords to rank your board up high as well. But it also helps your shoppers when they come in here and they just want the funny t-shirts. They don't want the inspirational ones. They can get what they want, get get to it faster and make that decision to get it in their bag and their shopping cart, take action on it and buy it. You at least want them to get it into their bag and get it in their shopping cart so that Pinterest will send them an email later, especially if you do a price change and say, hey, um, something has happened to the price. You need to go check out your your shopping cart, your bag. Okay, so those are a bunch of tips that I would definitely take advantage of and do here with the boards, everything that's going on here. And then you might wanna consider consolidating some boards so that it's less work for you and use the sections. That way you don't feel like you're pinning the same thing out to like six boards at once when you could pin it to one board and have it go into different sections of your board instead. Um, might make it a little easier. So a lot of awesome stuff here. Any other comments that you want to say about your experience so far with Pinterest? Um, you know, anything that's been helping or not helping, what you've learned, 
It could be what you learn not to do, what you what you've learned to do more of. Well, I'm getting I'm definitely learning how to make pins that are more effective. I did do one buyer or shopper's guide and that is doing well compared to my other pins. Um, I'm using Canva, trying to get the hang of, you know, doing collections and then there's Shopify collections and then there's kit and then there's mm -hmm. my blog where I can combine <laughs> things. And sometimes it's like, uh, okay, what am I doing? Wait, wait, what am I doing? So yeah. I kind of got a, today was working on, all right, now when I, when I create a single print on demand design, I put it on these products. And then when I do that, what do I do? Do I pin it? Do I mm -hmm. put it in, in how many collections? Do I make a kit out of it? So some of what mm -hmm. I'm trying to do is it's not really a process. Maybe it's a strategy, but it's easy. It's easy to go, oh, let's just do this and then go, wait, did I do that with that? and that? <laughs> so it, it gets it gets overwhelming. Yeah, right. And yeah. then you yeah. like I could create a collection. I, I take one design and put it on several products. Okay, so that would be a different way to market those same products. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, it's good. I think I have to be patient. Pinterest is, is slow. Seems mm -hmm. like when I do things on Facebook, it's like right now, hurry, hurry, right now, right now. But <laughs> sometimes it takes a while. Some other mm -hmm. things yeah. I've read or listened to say, it, you know, it just takes a little, takes maybe a few months before something connects. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It might be a few months down the road before the pin finally takes off and goes viral. It might be a year. So there's a lot of people who are, um, you know, there's people out there who go back and they delete the pins that didn't do well, that didn't take off after three months. But then there's people who say, don't delete those pins because you didn't wait long enough. If you would have kept that, left that pin alone, six months from now, it may be the time when it finally takes off and goes viral because they've seen it happen. So I'm kind of in that camp of don't delete your pins because it's there's still the potential for it to go viral and to really take off for you a year later. And if you delete it, you're not giving it a chance to work. Um, Do you have the same philosophy if they're ugly pins? you know, like squares or you pin them before you knew what you were doing or. Yeah, I delete those. <laughs> okay. All right. Those okay. are my past mistakes. And usually it's been like a year and there's, they still have done nothing. And it's like, yeah, I know why they haven't done nothing. Cause I didn't know what I was doing at the okay. time. Yeah, that makes, makes me feel yeah. better because I was literally, Oh, don't delete pins. Like, Oh man, that's ugly. <laughs> but nobody's pinned it. It's awful. Yeah. It's not going. Yeah. And then, what about philosophy for products that are no longer available and you have pins for them? I would get rid of those. Yeah. Because okay. you, you aren't selling that product anymore. If you know, so it's not really doing the shopper any good because they just say, Oh wow, gee, you're out of stock. You're not selling that anymore. Um, so I would get rid of anything that you're no longer selling or offering. Um, and probably delete those out. If you feel like in the future you are going to sell it again, then I would leave that pin alone and leave it there. But if you absolutely know I'm no longer going to be selling that item, then I would probably get rid of the pin um, because it's just not something that you're offering anymore. Okay. But yeah, there's a it's a big learning curve. There's a lot of stuff um, to do. The, the big part about this is just trying to focus on, you know, one thing at a time and say, OK, um, I'm just going to focus on my Shopify store, creating the Bible pins. I'm just going to create some awesome looking pins that will connect to my products. Those are going to be all my Bible pins. Get those up first. And just focus there and then say, OK, let's start writing blog articles. Well, now I can take those products from Shopify you can embed that right inside of your blog article. And now I'm going to focus on creating pins for my blog article and get that stuff to start go moving and taking off. And you kind of get that going and you have to work on just that and maintain everything else. So it's, it's basically what you're doing is you're focusing on one thing and you're putting everything else in maintenance mode so that it's just easier to handle. We only do it like for 15 minutes a week. But where you spend an hour or two hours is on the one thing that you're trying to now develop um, and grow that bigger. And that might be an easier way to, to tackle and handle that. Another option could be to hire a VA. 
where you've just really nailed it down and it's working for you. So then you pass that over to someone else and they can keep that going for you while you now develop a certain, another area, another possibility, another technique that does well for you on Pinterest. So why this get, can be overwhelming is because of the possibilities are endless. There's so many different possibilities here that it's very easy to get caught up in it and get overwhelmed and, and, get confused as to where, where am I supposed to be working? I could be working on six, six different things here because they're all uh, lucrative. They all do well, but you just have to pick one at a time and then go from there. Um, let's get some questions here that have popped up since we've been talking here. Yeah. So Michelle saying that she's been using the um, uh, Pinterest hashtags on Instagram to help with keywords. Um, yes, that would be great in order to help people find on Instagram. But here's the, here's the, the situation is that you're on Pinterest and the, the keywords that people use to find things on Pinterest are completely different than what it is on Instagram or any other site. So your best bet is to always find your keywords and your hashtags and what people are using on Pinterest right directly on Pinterest. It doesn't make sense to go anywhere else to find that information, not even a keyword tool. You absolutely need to use Pinterest as your keyword tool. It's a very, very easy keyword tool to use. You can actually take those keywords and put them out into your uh, products, like in your Shopify store, your blog, and you can use your, your keywords there. Why? Because it will rank up the article, the pin, everything a little higher in the smart feed because you are still using those keywords that you got right from Pinterest in those areas off site of Pinterest as well. Um, great question here. Should you only have viable pins in a board? Absolutely not. Don't ever put yourself in a box and limit it to only buyable pins. I never do that. I create collections and I put collections of products together. When you do that, it may not be a buyable pin. That's okay because that has a very high click through rate as well. Never say that you're only going to do one thing and just try that experiment with lots of different things. So the answer would be definitely don't just only do buyable pins try a variety of things that will help you. Um, yeah, and then there's just one last comment here. Um, I didn't know they stayed Bible pins when you put them in the long pin. Yes. So I would take the time to create your own pin that is a long pin. It will still be a Bible pin. It's just that you are able to tell your customer everything that you have to offer in one image. Whereas if you pin directly from Shopify, what it shows is just one image and they have to click through to see all the other images, which is all the other colors or variations of what you have to offer. So it's really best to get all of those images up on the front pin because that's going to help encourage them to click through to see, oh, they have all these other things to offer there. So you're looking for those clicks. That's that's the number one thing that you want on Pinterest there. Okay, that's all the questions that I'm seeing down here. So any any last words that you want to say about your your Pinterest journey? No, I would thank you, thank you for the constructive criticism today. It wasn't as painful and as I no. thought it might be. No, if somebody no. else wants to be in the hot seat. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it was, look at the look at the free advice I got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always something in progress. It's always something in progress. Progress. People should never look for perfection. You'll never achieve it. It's always a work in progress. So everyone's in the same boat. We've always got work to do. We've always got improvement to make. Right. So it's not like one person has just totally made it, you know, <laughs> they just have arrived and there's nothing more for them to do. You'll never find that. <laughs> it's impossible. There's, there's so much to learn and Pinterest changes and evolves all the time, just like everything else does. So they're always going to offer something else that's going to be new and awesome and cool to start incorporating in. 
So then you'll change your strategy just a little bit. Um, so the idea is to just make adjustments as you go and kind of adapt um, to the situation. So, all right, I think we will quit for now, but if there's any other uh, questions that anyone has or comments, definitely leave them down in the comments below. And uh, I can go in there and answer questions. Nancy's happy to go in there and answer questions too to help others. But um, I just want to thank you, Nancy, for being willing oh, to welcome. to be transparent and <laughs> to be willing to to have the courage to share everything that you've been working on and, and sharing your experience and what's happening and, and showing what that looks like. I think this is going to help a lot of people out there. So thank you so much You're welcome. For, for being willing to do that and for being willing to be here today. And uh, maybe we'll do it again later. And what will be cool is that the journey will look totally different and we'll be able to look back and compare that to uh, what everyone saw today. So that would be awesome. All right, well, let's end for today. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. And we'll talk to you again soon.